What's up guys and welcome to Exotic Idiotics. My name is Jeff. My name is Maddox. And today we are finally going to be rehousing our Vietnamese giant centipede. A little bit less of we and more of him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've been watching this channel for a while, um, you know, Maddox hates this thing. Like, absolutely hates With it. With a passion. <laughs> hates it. I mean, anytime he tries to film it feeding, he gets freaked out. It flops all over the place. If you have them, you know what we're talking about. Um, this species is wicked fast, uh, very unpredictable, and they have an extremely painful bite. So, I'm excited. I'm ready. He's also... <laughs> it's in the name. Idiotic. <laughs> wow, thanks, buddy. Gotcha. Yeah, so... We're going to go ahead and uh, get into that right now. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what enclosure we're putting it in, why we're going to do some things a little bit different than the way we did it the first time. Um, if you did not see the video when we first brought him home from the expo and set him up, I'm going to put a link right here. You can go check it out when we first brought this guy home. Uh, so stick around and, and let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. So as we said, today we are rehousing our Vietnamese centipede, the Scolopendra subspinipedes. Now, this centipede is extremely fast and very unpredictable. They can climb and they pound for pound are said to have the most painful bite in the animal kingdom. In fact, unlike the tarantulas, which we consistently say have medically significant venom, but have never actually been on record as being deadly, there was a case in the Philippines where a seven-year-old girl was bit in the head by one of these and died 29 hours later. So today, I get to practice my social distancing from behind the camera. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I like to have Maddox be as hands-on as possible for, uh, for learning, but this is one of those where I just don't feel comfortable with him messing with it because I don't really feel comfortable messing with it. You and me both. <laughs> so, we are going to move it from, we have it currently in an 8x8x8 Exoterra um, front opening, which when I got it, I thought it would be big enough. I didn't really think it was big enough pretty much from the moment I put him in there. Um, so today we are going to rehouse him into this enclosure from Herp Colt. Uh, they can actually chew through the screen lids on these Exoterras. This has the sliding locking like all Herp Colt, the sliding locking lid on it that he's not gonna be able to chew through. And it's still plenty deep enough. The ventilation is up high enough where I will be able to fill up the substrate so he can burrow. Okay, so. When I'm doing this rehouse, what I'm going to try to do is get him into this critter keeper uh, so I can hold him in there temporarily while I set up the new enclosure. Now, I want to have the front of this enclosure facing this direction. So if he does come out the front and I actually miss with the critter keeper, then he will be out on the table and I have a chance to actually get him rather than having the enclosure turned towards me to where he comes out and ends up on my lap. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start by trying to find him. I'm assuming he's going to be under this cork bark. There he is. Um, I am again going to come in from the top and I'm going to try to corral him right out of the front and into the critter keeper. He is a spaz. They kind of all are. Okay, that was really way easier than I thought it was gonna be. If you wanna get some good footage of him. Not particularly, no. Go ahead. You can see just how fast he is. Um, and he's in a container where he can't really grip a whole lot, but you saw how quickly he just jumped right out. That was about as smooth as I could have asked for. All right, now we're gonna set up the new enclosure. Um, I had this old enclosure set up with a drainage layer bioactive because they do like the extra humidity um, and moisture, but they don't like the substrate being really damp. So I did wanna have a drainage layer in there. I'm actually not going to do that in this enclosure because he was digging down so deep that he was tearing the barrier apart and there were pieces of it everywhere. So for this one, I'm actually going to just attempt to just put a deep enough layer of substrate in there that he can dig all the way down to the bottom without tearing everything apart. Uh, I think that that's just gonna be better overall. So let's go through 
and get a lot of this stuff out. I'm just going to use my hands here because it's not a tarantula. There's not going to be urticating hairs all inside of it. I will laugh so hard. Oh my if gosh. For some reason, something hit your head. <laughs> well, dude, on honestly, with him, even with him not in here, I'm like almost nervous like digging through this because it's just like, he's like. What if it was a pregnant female? Oh, shut dude, stop. <laughs> stop. With you, dude, why would you say that to me right now? That was so mean. You were like, oh, he's probably pregnant. There's probably babies in there, and you're going to just get bit a hundred times. If it was pregnant, it wouldn't be a he. Actually. Oh, yeah, you're right. Still, that was rude. <laughs> Very rude. Okay, so I'm actually going to put um, a little deeper, the substrate deeper on the one side where I'm going to put his cork bark hide back in here. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I might need to add some more. Let's add some more substrate. This isn't enough. All right, we got some more substrate. This is just our idiotic compound, which is, as we've said before, combination of topsoil, sphagnum moss, leaf litter, carbon, sand. Um, I did see some isopods running around in here. Uh, like I said before, we did set this up bioactive. These things are really messy eaters, so I will put food in there and then I will find things like roach wings and <laughs> and pieces of crickets and whatever inside. Um, so the isopods take care of that uh, in the springtails and they help keep it from getting super moldy. So <clears throat> now he's all set up. Let's get his water dish in there. There should be plenty of room now for him to where did my water thing go? Thank you, dude. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the problems I was having before was as he was kicking the dirt around, there was not enough room in there for there to even really be a water dish and him, I guess. So as he started kicking up any dirt, it just automatically went into the water dish and was basically soaking up the water and it was hard to keep fresh water available for him at all times. So I'm hoping that giving him a little bit of extra space is going to be helpful. Um, this substrate is pretty damp, I'm not gonna lie, but it is not sopping wet. You don't want it swampy, but they do like the moisture, like I said. So, let's get him back in there. Okay, so, my goal here is I'm going to cover up, I'm sliding the lid on here just enough to kind of get him in, but that way if he bolts, he can't come out the other side. So we're gonna just try to open him up and really just dump him in there because he can't really grip on this plastic very well. And we're gonna just try to get him to hopefully come right out just like that. Now I'm gonna close this up. Um, <clears throat> these enclosures from Herb Cole are fantastic for stuff like this because the locking lids are great. It makes it so they can't escape. They can't chew through it. There's no wire or anything. Um, if you would like to get yourself an enclosure like this, you can go to herpcult.com and use code EXOTICFAM10. Get yourself 10% off of these. They're great. This is kind of becoming just about all we use for invertebrates now um, because they look really nice. They're crystal clear and they're just really easy to work with. Um, so yeah, that was that was as smooth of a rehouse as we could have asked for. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Uh, You're just relieved that that I thing didn't so get out relieved. and start running around our room. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. No, but we appreciate it. We hope you guys learned a little bit about this species. Um, if you're interested in keeping one, make sure to do a lot of research. Uh, because, like a lot of research? Yeah, because they, they're they crazy. <laughs> they're absolutely insane. Uh, I can't believe that I barely tapped it once and it just went straight into the, you know, the critter keeper like that. That was incredible. Um, because usually... Um, they flop around like insane like and try to out of water. and try to escape and yeah they're 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 a crazy species but I really do enjoy keeping it I know you don't nope <laughs> Maddox hates it you hate I it I would give anything to just oh uh, like... yeah but I don't know they're they're awesome um, if you are into invertebrates they are definitely a unique one to to have in your collection um, 
But we are going to leave links down below to uh, Herb Colt's website so you can pick up one of these enclosures if you're interested. Again, use code EXOTICFAM10. Get yourself 10% off. Um, also, if you like this video, leave us a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this around uh, all things exotic, um, we do reptiles, invertebrates, amphibians a little bit, saltwater fish. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Turn those notifications on. If you want to talk to us more, consider joining our Discord. I'll leave a link down to that below. We are in there all day, every day, pretty much chatting about um, exotic animals and just life in general. Um, also, our merch store. Oh, yeah. Um, we do have some new merch up there. We're adding new merch regularly, so we'll leave a uh, link to that below as well. So that's all I got for you today. You got anything else? Mm -mm. Nope. All right. Well, we will see, see you next time. time.